he's uh, launching all sorts of things. And one of the things that he will be doing in the next 12 months is uh, breaking the sound barrier with a small aircraft. Um, and uh, it will be uh, very interesting for so far the highest speed has been 400, uh, I think, and 40 miles an hour. And, and so just to clarify, this is a drone aircraft. Your 12-year-old son is not going to be flying solo at supersonic speeds. I was just getting to that. These are very small <laughs> aircraft. He'll be piloting it from the ground. And um, we will get one of the universities uh, involved. They've already raised their, their head to say, yeah, we want to be part of this. So he'll have his own team of PhD students shortly. Um, and uh, he's basically uh, been working on this and uh, piloting small RC aircraft and uh, with point of view facilities, but I believe it's possible and you know, it's part of my company's uh, strategy as much as uh, you know, of interest to Stella as to using such experiments for learning how to go transonic and potentially in the future with re-entry vehicles and so on. And, uh, it will be a very interesting time um, in the future with, with all of this, but for Team Stella, yes, we're testing comms, we're testing the relays, we're testing long distance stuff and uh, recently we had a stratospheric balloon in Croatia that uh, Jason and I and, and our CTO, Tim Blacksland from Australia, also went over. And we were having video, uh, high definition video being streamed from, I think, uh, over 70 kilometres distance from the balloon. So, if, we, yeah, we're doing all this work because it's what you need to do before you actually make very strong decisions about which technology you use on the moon. That, that's, that's entirely true. and. What you guys are, are accomplishing on the side of sorting commercial space, on the side of finding long-term viability plans, in defining the technology, is all complemented by the people who are working to map out the moon in high resolution, which, which actually includes our citizen scientists over at CosmoQuest and trying to understand craters and what it is that causes them to degrade with time on this surface that has limited atmosphere and no weather or tectonics to speak of. It's, it's all such a complicated problem and what's amazing is we're figuring it out. Now, there's a lot of people that wish we could be figuring it out faster. And, and Nancy Graziano asks, do you think Americans will ever experience the urgency for space exploration that we experienced during the Apollo era 60s space race?